everyone, welcome to Murphy's Garden. It's the first um, lovely day we've had for a little while. So I'm just gonna go around the garden. We've got some dead heading to do and um, I've got some nice um, presents and things that I got for my birthday, which was this month. So I just want to show you, show you those. So we'll just start. So the borders here, um, they're looking really nice. I'm really pleased. Had that um, bit of a June gap when I did the last film um, back in June. There was lots of um, kind of gaps in the border, but that's all filling out. Um, so the, here the Achillea is looking really nice and the Campanula and all the Salvias. It's looking really quite full. Um, down here, these are the Livingstone daisies that we grew from seed and they're really pretty. They come out in the sunshine and open full and then close up at night time. So that's really nice to see. And if we just go around, um, the, this is looking good. Um, gets a bit battered by all the rain. So I just literally deadheaded everything and it's all come back again. Um, and then here, I do, I do like this, is the um, um, phlox and the salvia and the uh, monk's hood behind it. And these are daylilies. The daylilies um, are called daylilies because they, they flower just for one day. So when the flower is spent, you just snap that off and it does, it keeps coming again and again. So just take off the, the older looking flowers like that and they'll keep, they'll keep producing for quite a long time to come. So when I walk around the garden, I always take my bucket with me and I just um, deadhead as I go. So we've got the first of the um, dahlias that have come out. This is a lovely pink dahlia. I don't lift my dahlias because we've got really sandy soil. I used to lift them and it's such a palaver and such a hassle that I experimented um, by leaving them in and they were fine. In fact, we had a very cold winter the first year I did it and they all survived. So I thought, well, if they can survive that winter, they'll be fine. So um, this is another beautiful little Campanula. Um, I like Campanulas. I've bought, um, I, I just could show you this bird over here. I bought a love, another um, Campanula in um, the market. We've got some, we've got a lovely local market in our um, town. So um, every Thursday she does, um, has, has plants. So this Thursday I bought quite a lot. I spent, I got a lot of plants and it only came to about 30 pounds, but this is one here. Look at how pretty that is. It's got lovely, lovely flowers on it. Um, I bought some other plants as well, which I'll show you as we go round. So if we come round this way, um, this is the beech hedge that we put in earlier in the year and that's put on quite a lot of growth. Um, interesting to see that one of them we thought was dead but has actually come back to life again. It's got some new leaves on the top so we were going to pull that out. If you come around here, um, in this border we've got a lovely eupatorium here which is very nice <coughs> and another and a phlox and a dahlia but hidden in the back here um, if you can see this um, this is a um, on the word echinacea that orange echinacea it's a lovely lovely plant but it's completely hidden there so i try and kind of make notes as i go and try and think right that needs to be moved somewhere more visible down here um is a is a delphinium so that was one of the ones that we cut right back and as you can see that's starting to reshoot so that'll that will look lovely again but that needs to be moved because that's wasted there and then if we come around into this board, and I last night, I was out here till, um, well, it was dark, it was 10 o'clock. Um, I wanted to just have a sort out. I had these geraniums here. They kind of produce these nice mines, but they're not terribly spectacular. And they were getting bigger and bigger and had taken over most of this area. So I'm trying to be quite ruthless with um, uh, geraniums because they do self-seed everywhere. And if you're not careful, you end up with a whole garden just of geraniums. So I've taken probably three of the big clumps out. Um, this Nepeta had been cut back and that's starting to reshoot. Although it wasn't reshooting on this side because of the geranium. So that with that coming out, that should help that. And um, these are more of the plants that I bought in the market. So we've got these asters. So that will provide some autumn color and should be nice. And then these two pink things are um, Lobelia. It's a perennial Lobelia um, and that will come back every year. It looks completely different to the the bedding Lobelia that we're used to, but um, that's um, really nice. And then this is the, um, this little plant here is um, Aragon er, er, or something. It's a very fashionable little plant, it just looks like a daisy. And you see them everywhere in all the garden magazines. They, they're quite nice in little containers and things. 
and the lady in the market who I bought it from, so she uses it in place of um, um, the trailing lobelia in pots and containers and that's quite nice, but that does come back every year so you can keep it and reuse it year on year. Um, this is a nice um, Eucara, that's lovely. And then if we continue around here, um, in this border we've got some more um, Livingstone daisies which are just forming a little clump. I had so many seeds and things that were getting quite old so I just shoved them in. There's a, there's a sunflower there, it's not perhaps in the right place, I don't, I don't remember putting that in. And then, oh this is another um, plant I got, this is um, from, the um, uh, uh, from the strawberry plant, you can see the leaves look like strawberry plants, it's um, Potentilla. And this is a high, a high growing one. I've got a low growing one in the border, so I haven't quite decided where to put that. So I'm just thinking about that. I'm trying to, this, these beds here, you get much closer to the plants than you do perhaps up in the big borders. So the big borders need kind of big high up plants, whereas these borders, you can appreciate the detail of the smaller flowers. Um, you'll see here, we've got our outside gym. Um, just as nobody can go in anywhere really or go to gyms or get much exercise we've set this up and the kids are using this I must admit I don't do anything but I think I'll get enough exercise in the garden and then here I've got some lavender this is the French lavender that was just a little um, clump of pansies that I find buried so I just popped it in there and this is a geranium which is a lovely geranium it's called um, summer skies and I had a clump of it over there and I really liked it so during the wet weather I've split it and put a little clump there um, and these geraniums these are the nice um, just one flower on that but the purple geraniums that's lovely um, and that always looks nice um, and then if we come up here I've got some more lavender yeah and hopefully that that aster will look quite give a bit of height in this area because that border has been very flat so just give a little bit of height and we've got rather a lot of these day lilies, um, but that's a spent flower, so that just needs snapping off. And um, the roses need to be deadheaded, so I just, um, like with this one here, all of those flowers really have gone over, so I'm just going to cut it there. Um, and I, I do need to go round and deadhead everything as I go. Uh, I've got a lot of roses to deadhead, but I have been feeding my roses this year. I've been doing a seaweed feed about every week or every two weeks, and that's really helping. This is Echinop, Echinops, which um, the bees absolutely love. It's not quite out yet, but already there's some insects buzzing around. And then against the um, borders, we've got against the fences, we've got some nice um, clem um, clematis. This is looking good. And again, you can deadhead that, and it does also keep coming. And then if we head up, um, oh, this is another plant that I bought. This is a salvia. I've got um, one in the ground and one here. This is called Mystic Spires. Um, so I've got to put that one in somewhere. I haven't quite decided where. And then here I've got the sedum. The sedum I experimented with last year where I cut some right to the base, some sort of halfway and others I just left. And the ones that I left just completely flopped sort of by about this time so now what I do when the sedum comes through sort of in June time I just cut it all right to the ground and it encourages it to come back again much much stronger stronger stems and it st stands up and it means it just looks a lot nicer for longer this is just some of the lobelia that we grew from seed um, it's just kind of stuck in everywhere and this this is an old rose that we had growing up the front of the house it's quite an um, quite an old kind of variety anyway we popped it in there it used to have loads of black spot on it but actually it's doing quite well this year with um, being fed and looked after a little bit more um, and around here this is the um, this has been lovely with all the clematis and the, the roses um, the olivia rose has just about to come into flower again it's all budded again and then if we head down this path we've got some more um, more da uh, dahlias there. I had a clump of dahlias down the bottom which was just covered in insects and it's killed the plant actually. Um, and then if we look down here, so this is meant to be a mass of frothy purple with the nepeta that we put in. We did do a video on nepeta and how to take um, cuttings and we filled these whole paths with nepeta. I did cut it all back. We, I did the box hedging, um, it's all been cut 
and also at the same time just chop back the napita and it's coming back again for another flush so what i don't want is it all i don't really want it all trailing onto the over the box hedging because that's not good for the box you want to have lots of air circulating so um yeah so i just try and keep it under control perhaps in hindsight maybe it would have been better to do lavender i don't know but anyway it's look, it looks nice when it's out so if we head now we'll come back to the woodland garden in a minute if you come into the parterre notice on this one it's this spiral tree has got a bit of um it's gone a bit brown in the middle but there are lots of new there's lots of new growth here so feeding it and hope it will be okay but i would hate for that to die uh, i've done all the box hedging that's all been cut it's starting now it's you know quite juvenile still but it is starting to knit together as you can see and it's looking quite nice the ballerina roses have been spectacular really lovely um, as I said in the last video, we've got this odd discrepancy in the colour. So the ones on this side are the dark pink and the ones on this side, for some reason, are a paler pink. Um, but anyway, they look nice, but I'm not quite sure why that is. So up the obelisk, I've got some sweet pea. I thought I'd planted a, a dark pink variety, but obviously not, which I'm quite glad about because I think it would have been a bit too much pink. But when I get the clusters of roses that have gone over like that, just cut out the whole the whole stem cut it down low and that will reflower so that needs perhaps doing a little bit more and then very ex oh this is my new present from my for my birthday um it's a stone obelisk and it looks really fantastic it really complements the the cobble so i'm really pleased with that we had a big but i don't know if you remember from other videos we've got this big pot i'll show you in a minute that we bought for this area and it just didn't look right it was too big and um, this this is certainly more to scale and it matches the the look of the wooden obelisk so that looks really nice and it's got the black marks on it which also kind of mimic the cobble set so that looks really good a good addition to the family to the to the household and it doesn't get in the way it's good for the wheelbarrow it doesn't get doesn't block our access i want to show you now the new area that's coming on really really well so the up to now it ended here so Alistair's been busy putting in a new cobble row here, another path. So this goes down that way. The pot that I was referring to is here. And again, I still, we still don't think this, it was going to go here and this is going to be its new home, but I'm not quite sure this is the right place. I've actually got other ideas and places for it. So there's going to be a, another U hedge here, up to here. And then this is the new path. So this will have... Um, a slate path coming down here and then opening up to this big apron that they're the slates at the back there by the shed so this is where we're going to have the table which we've currently got around there will be on here with a big um, uh, pergola over the top with roses and then this area will have the um, the nice pink um, pea gravel that we've used on the path so this is going to be fantastic we're going to have an another new area so we'll have the yew hedges you'll walk down here and then um, this will all be you hedging. And then you go out here into the garden and there'll be another you hedge along here. So um, it will be completely enclosed and nice and nice in the evening. This is what we wanted somewhere to sit. That area is in the shade by sort of six o'clock time. So it's not any good. It's no good for eating our dinner right side. It's good for lunch, but not for dinner. So this is a lovely um, sunny area. So Alice has been brilliant getting all this done. He's got the levels already and um, that, that will be the next job just to lay those. So we'll come around here. He's just raised the level of the grass just to meet the path. So that's looking good. He's also going to shutter um, this area with some wood just to make, make a definition and make it easier for mowing. So we've got the the Irish ewes, they're doing really well. I just put string around them just to keep them keep their form, stop them kind of opening up and flopping. And then the other thing we've done, Joshua did this yesterday. These box we've these box balls had an issue with these box balls. We've had them for years and they've always struggled. They always struggle. So we've moved them. They used to be down near the house. We've moved them up here. And um, Alistair always complains when he mows that it's quite difficult to do around them so joshua yesterday we got a metal hoop like a bit like a hula hoop 
and he cut round there and cut out the grass. In fact, that's what we've used over there to fill in that area that needed more grass. So that will make, it looks nicer. Um, hopefully the plants will establish a bit better. This one particularly is not a very good shape. So anyway, we'll see if we can get that one to establish a bit better. And then um, these borders are looking really lovely. We've got the, this is called Lyastra. That's just about to open and the daisies are looking lovely and all the flocks. Um, the um, echinacea at the back is covered in butterflies. I don't know if you can see uh, the pink daisy at the back. Um, so yeah, that's good. This is the Alstromera. Um, my my um, sister-in-law got me for my birthday. I've got three different varieties and I've put it in, watered it really well. It's gone a bit, gone a little bit funny there. I don't know whether I should, with Alstromera, you don't cut it you pull it like rhubarb and that encourages it to grow so um, I don't know whether to do that yet as it is just a new plant so we'll, it's had lots of rain and water and stuff so it should be fine but we'll just keep an eye on that um, this is the phlox now this is probably in the um, wrong place it's quite high it perhaps needs to go back a bit I think these borders they're just not quite right yet they do look lovely but the heights aren't right they're a bit all over the place so I'm trying to sort of take lots of photographs and um, in this in the autumn I'll kind of move everything around um, but yeah it's it's doing it's doing well so if we just head around here this is uh, these are the roses I can't forget what they're called now my mum gave me these roses and they're a lovely um, coral color so again just keep dead heading them that one's a funny color look that one's a different colour that's a very pale orange and then this is um, the eupatorium that we've got quite a lot in the garden I got this at um, Powers Castle and it's it is lovely it stands up on its own but I must say this clump has, is getting rather big so I might have to just take a bit out in the autumn it's, I don't want it to take over the whole border um, and then if you look round here if you can get right round here there's a an echine, a lovely echinacea here with a, can you see the butterfly? I don't know if you can zoom in on that. Isn't that lovely? The butterfly's lovely echinacea, that's a lovely one. So I want that clump to get bigger. I've also got next to it, to the left of that echinacea, is a sunflower, but look how small it is. Why is it not any bigger? I don't know. All my sunflowers this year are very small. I'm not sure why. And this is the um, Verbena bonariensis, which um, seeds everywhere for me, all over the borders. I'm always taking it out. It is lovely. Um, I do let it, I do let it come on in in places, but I certainly don't want it all over the whole garden. And then the beech hedge at the back, after being knocked back with the um, the late frost we had back in was it May? I think it was May. We had lots of dead leaves, but as you can see, it's recovered and it's all starting to regrow again. In the background, you can see um, this is a mixed um, hedge of mostly mostly hornbeam. It's got some other bits in it too, but that's our job for today. So after I finish this video, we'll be going out to um, cut that. So I think if we now head into the um, the vegetable patch. So the potatoes are doing very well. Um, we've been eating the um, first earlies, which were the Mary Bard. Um, I was a little bit disappointed with the number of potatoes we got per plant. Um, we've already used from here to here, dug up, and we've got a, a bucket full about this size of potatoes, which were delicious, but um, not that many of them. We've used this, the area where the potatoes were. Um, if you remember in the last video, Olivia had planted some um, cabbage plants. So I've put those in and covered them with the, the net. So that's making use of that land. And then if we come into the... Um, no, we'll go in this other gate. Oh, if we have a look here, the peas are forming really well. We've got some ones that are ready. We've been eating them because they're just delicious. Some of the pods aren't quite ready, but that's nice. That's not that big, but anyway, they're lovely. So um, 
we've just been we've just been eating every time we're out in the garden we're gorging on peas and then um if we come in we're coming through this way so these are the parsnips they're getting really big lovely parsnip plants um these are the um celeriac and um we've got um actually some uh, beetroot and more parsnips some celery some carrots um the carrots um just nip across here this is um this is the spinach the lettuce that we had it was the just a little bit of the lettuce left over there it's the um, cut and come again variety but it had all, we'd, we've been eating it for quite a long time now so it had all gone to seed so um, I've taken it all out and replaced it so I've got some this is um, some other little clumps of this is spicy different um, spicy kind of variety so that's gone in there and over here I've planted some um, rind lettuces um, and they get eaten by the slugs terribly so I have put used slug pellets just around about um, in the background here, this is um, this is dill herb, um, and it's just lovely. It smells smells divine, and we've been making a sauce with that, which is really nice with fish. Um, also nice in hamburgers and things like that. So that's good. And this herb here is called savory. I've never grown this before. It came on um, that seed tape that you get. So um, um, anyway, it's done quite well. And you can use that um, sort of in place of um, like roasted vegetables and things like that. And it, sm it doesn't smell much when you smell it, but if you rub the leaves, it smells really nice. And then um, just here we've got some, this is the celery. And that's doing quite well. And it's obviously enjoyed all the rain. And then um, just some bedding here, some of the um, petunias and things that we grew from seed. And then in our uh, makeshift cold frame, we've just got some leftover plants which probably won't get used now, really, because they've got enough of everything. This is the rocket. Um, the basil's gone a bit funny. I think too much wet on it. I should have brought it in. That's gone to seed. That needs to come out. Um, oh, and we've got some... These are some rose cuttings that I did. This is the Olivia rose. I've done some more cuttings. We've had such success. This is... Um, this is the one that I did previously and I've got a lovely new plant so I thought I'll do some more that works so well and then I've also done some of the um, ballerina rose cuttings as well so we'll see how they do up here we've got the um, tumbling tom tomatoes and just starting to get a little bit of redness to them so they shouldn't be long the outside tomatoes are a lot further behind the in inside ones definitely um, if you want to head into the, let me just put the thing back. This just keeps all the flies out, which is really good. And then if you come in here, it's like a jungle. So the tomatoes looking really, really good. Um, no blossom end rot. We had blossom end rot last year where I think I was over water. Well, I know I was over watering them. I was washing them every day and they don't really, they don't dry out every day. So I'm, not doing that, I'm doing them every other day, depending on the weather really, of course. If it's very hot, then I might water every day. And then we're eating the cucumbers. Can you see that cucumber? You see that? And then um, the aubergines are just starting to form a little bit. But yes, everything in here is doing very well. You have to be very careful because you can break stuff. I've got some carrots under there and this is a Oh, this is a pepper plant so it's quite slow and then this is Olivia's um, this is a little lemon plant that Olivia was given at she works at a nursery locally so they gave her a little lemon plant that's nice so that's that and then if we head into these is this is one of my courgette plants which is um I haven't got room for them all in the garden so I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'll just so in here 
I've done, I've grown some more. I had some chard here, which had all started to bolt. So I've put some more in. These are some radishes, which were, um, which we're eating. There's a nice one there. And these are some leeks. These are the, um, the beetroot and they're getting quite big now. In here, I've got the um, French beans and they're doing well. Definitely a good idea to cover them because the birds, I think it was the sparrows, I caught them in the act. They were um, digging them up. One of them there has been attacked, so I have put this on and that's helping. This is the calabrese, which we've been eating. You can see the um, heads on it there. In the background, you've got some kale again. We're eating that, that's lovely. And then we've got the sprouting broccoli and then the corn and the cob. And I've got each plant has got about three, three, uh, three um, cobs on it, so that's good. Also got some more, um, what else did I put in? Got some lettuces in between the rows of um, just catch crops just to make the most of the land. Also some basil. I don't, basil doesn't seem to do very well, but anyway, I've tried it. And then here I've got um, two gooseberry bushes. So we've picked, they're completely stripped now. Uh, we had an excellent crop of gooseberries this year. This is a new plant, so not much from this one, but this one I've had um, two big ice cream containers of that rhubarb's done brilliantly this year for the first time delighted um got two big um clumps of rhubarb and we picked um joshua and i we had harvested a lot yesterday so we've picked um lots of that or not picked it pulled it and then joshua's job under here was to pick the black currants which he's done he's got um two ice cream containers of black currants we've also got a um blueberry bush in a pot and that's been under there as well and that we've we've eaten all the blueberries on that as well this one is another blueberry but that didn't really have much on it this year for some reason so and then to my surprise these are the um the runner beans and they're still obviously making their way up the thing the support but when i looked yesterday i noticed that there were quite a lot of um of beans on there i didn't think they'd be ready yet but there were quite a lot so we picked them and had them yesterday with our dinner we had a lovely dinner um with salmon um and it was yummy and then here we've got the broad beans and they're almost ready um starting to completely collapse but i'm chomping at the bit because when these are ready they will all come out and then we'll have some room for some other things because i've got all these um courgette plants and not just courgette button the squash plants i've got loads of squashes and i love squashes so i want to get them in to the ground because i don't think they like it in pots and then here we've got the um courgettes um which we've just we've actually picked but i will just see i see one these are the little um little round ones and honestly i'm picking them really tiny because any bigger than that they'd look a bit like the uh, honey bear butternut squashes and I think I was letting them get to the size of those and they're not nice they have to be picked small um, like any courgette really but um, don't think we've got any more of them. So um, this this border behind me is completely different from last month where I filmed sitting here last month the background was all foxgloves but they've all gone now and they've been replaced we've got the buddleia in the background which is just opening we've got masses of um, cosmos that we grew from seed and then the day lilies and this very vibrant um, phlox and of course the verbena which is everywhere and some dahlias so we're going to head now into um, the sunken garden this is covered in insects this um, time and then if we head down into here so the Hydrange, this is Hydrangea um, limelight, and that's just starting to open. I really love this grass. This is um, a pheasant grass, and it looks so iridescent and lovely in the, the sort of dappled light. It looks really nice. This area is uh, just what I wanted. It's very kind of tranquil and quite shaded, um, and yeah, it's, it's looking as I as I envisaged. And these are the Portuguese laurels and they're looking really healthy. We've got lots of new growth. We were a bit worried about some of them because one or two weren't looking that great, but they've put on new growth and it's looking good. We're heading now to the woodland garden. Again, we've cut all the, the box. Oh, I've got this in my hand because I wanted to show you. After we cut the box, um, 
I always I watered it with um, seaweed feed and then I spray it with this is the um, top boxes health mix and you just dilute it it comes in I'll show you how it comes it comes in these tablets long string of tablets like that and you just dissolve it in um, in I think it's about a litre of water or something like that it says it all yeah a litre of water and then you put it in a sprayer and then just go around and spray all the box so I think that that seems to work well for us we try and do that at least sort of two or three times a year and then this is the this is a, a ivy which is the vision is is that to grow over this whole archway and just to be a massive ivy however this ivy seems to have vertigo it doesn't seem to like to climb forcing this bit up here but it, it's very very reluctant it likes to sprawl this way but actually we've managed to get this look here which is just so pretty with the dark leaves and the ivy it looks really really nice um yeah and the woodland garden the trees are looking good this is the um, silver birches and they're putting on new leaves um it's looking good um yeah and then if we head around here so we've got this um nice big leafed hosta we've managed we've got a few um bit of a little bit of slug damage but not much and this is olivia's little um area that she planted out all the little um alpine plants and things and that's looking nice and um, we've got a nice euchre there now this is a this is an interesting thing this is called salsify which is a it's an edible thing and you eat the root it forms like it looks a bit like a like a parsnip it's a, a kind of creamy colored root and you dig it up in the autumn and we used it to make um joshua made some soup but yeah it's called salsify don't know how it got here i can only presume a bird brought it but um i just let it seed because and the flower heads it's really lovely look at the flower head it's really nice seed head um here this is a nice area this is um, sort of our dry area we've got the big steeper gigantica in the background um, the bear's britches the eupatorium and then this is the these are the drumstick um, alliums which are nice and this is the lamb's ear and I think that's a lovely color combination with the pinks and the purples together it looks nice and this is a scabious and in the cracks Olivia's just put some of her um, succulents um, and this is this big formium again that looks nice it's called um, red jester it's got the red the red outer leaves this is the bog garden um, with all the rain everything's doing quite well with it um, a still be looked very crispy and not very good when we had that hot weather but that's coming back again disappointingly the arum lily doesn't seem to be doing a great deal it is just coming coming up a little bit there but very slow this year we had a big clump of it last year and then the um, gunnera, um, I took a lot of the dead, the, the, the flower head, I've taken that off and I took a lot of the outer leaves and it's, look, it's looking okay. It's nice and architectural looking. Um, got an agapanthus under here. Don't think it's in the right spot, but anyway, it's trying to flower. And this formium, look at these, it's very structural and very architectural plant. And that's a lovely um, pittosporum as well. Um, now this here, this archway is covered in um, passion flower and when the sun's on it, the, the, can you see the flowers covered in flowers? It's absolutely beautiful, such unusual flower heads and the, the bees um, absolutely love it as well. I suppose it's very easy for the bees to get to it, it's very prominent. Look at that. Can you hear the buzzing? That there's one in there, look. <laughs> Very easy for them to get to the nectar, isn't it? <laughs> and then round here, we've got the more box hedging. We've got some uh, hydrange here. Not many flowers on the hydrange this year. We they kept getting burnt by late frost, so. Um, I don't think we're going to have that many flowers, but they do look pretty. This rose is nice, but it needs deadheading. And we're going to try and get this on oh, this lovely little, look at this little clematis, isn't that pretty? So I want to try and get that to climb over this archway. So I'm trying to sort of train it that way. These have all been pruned, the uh, lollipop trees. 
And then here, that's our um, tub that's doing well. Uh, again, that needs deadheading. And then if we come over here to the pond, the pond, um, as I said before, we've switched the pond off because of the, the still water, the lilies do better than that. The lilies are closed at the moment, but they are lovely. And our fish, um, let's feed the fish. Um, this area is at the front and the box hedging here you can see is looking really good so I've cut that I've done that with the the feed and the, everything else and it's looking really nice also I've deadheaded all the roses so they're not in flower but they'll come back again and then these pots are looking good the wisteria here ah do you know we're going to give up on this wisteria this wisteria has never flowered we must have had it for about 10 years and it just looks untidy it sprawls all over the place and never ever flower so I'm quite tempted to get rid of it and plant a climbing rose up here because it goes all over the windows and looks really untidy um, but all the pots are looking good um, here and the nepeta is nice with the roses And then if we head through here, I haven't shown you this area before because it's quite untidy, not very nice. We've got this very quaint little um, potting shed. And then this is, the, this is our old vegetable patch and which we now use for just surplus stuff. So this is all the yew hedging that's going to go into the new area. So that's, we bought that in the autumn and we've put it in here and just bring it on. It's got lots of new growth and that will go in um, to the new area. I've also pop popped some uh, leeks and some extra parsnips and I've even got some tomatoes here which aren't doing very well and even some lettuce but this area will transform this area probably um, next year but anyway that's everything um, thank you for watching and hope you enjoyed the tour see you next time